my guest on the show today has been one of the major names in the Nollywood movie industry. Now, he is a household name, has been a major force in the film industry for many things, apart from his fantastic acting, but also that very, very, very interesting smirk. He came into prominence for playing Makindea Shaw in the film The Meeting. Who can ever... <laughs> forget hilarious 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 movie i feel like that movie was an embodiment of every frustrated contractor in nigeria anyway for his role in the meeting just to expatiate how good it was he received the nomination for best actor in a leading role at the ninth in uh, africa movie academy awards join me in giving a very warm 360 welcome to a nigerian actor speaker and singer apparently femi jacobs oh look at you it's so good to have you on the show today <laughs> <laughs> it's good it's good to be here thank you for having me hi okay great so let's talk i just want to start with that movie the meeting I felt the frustration watching it. You know, you represented every single frustrated contractor in Nigeria so well. And I just want to know, for you acting, you know, how long has this been a passion for you? Oh, I, incidentally, I think acting kind of, uh, kind of found me. Um, it's, it's a story of grace. Nigerians use the word grace a lot, but I'm quite uh, particular and, and I know what I'm saying because I was, you know, just doing my own thing and um, I was called into a church drama and I wasn't even just a singer, I wasn't uh, an actor. I had never been on screen before, but I was um, told in 2006 or so to take part in my church drama. And it was pro bono, of course. You know, when you go to church, your life is in, is in the offering basket. So <laughs> I said, yes, let's go. So um, I did that. And when they did that in 2006, they said to me they wanted to do a series afterwards, which was uh, uh, another faith-based series. So I, I, you know, volunteered again. I did it. You know, both were um, lead roles. and. Both directors that I worked with said to me, I, I don't think this is just a play for you. I think you need to take this seriously. I didn't listen to them. Um, the second director, who was sort of a Macaulay, um, said to me one day, said, you must go for audition at Tinsu. Tinsu used to be the biggest um, um, TV show at that time. This was in 2008. So I went for the audition. But while I was there, I was already working in a bank. Uh, I had a day job, and, um, but I went. And um, incidentally, I was given a script, given a script of three scenes, but um, I ended up being with them for three seasons. And I was doing it then, still part-time. I was um, going to work and I was shooting for Tinsel, sometimes on Saturdays, sometimes mm -hmm. in the evening, sometimes very early in the morning, you know. And um, it was while I was there that I did one of the scenes, uh, it was a court scene. I was supposed to be a lawyer defending one of the uh, lead um, actors in Tinsel. And Medro Doko watched, saw me, and just said to himself, this is the guy I want for the meeting. And came and got my number through one of my friends there and called me. And I was quite surprised, I didn't know her. And I said, yes, OK, no problem, let's do this. And they sent me a script. And that was how it happened. So um, immediately after the meeting, everything blew up. I didn't even know what I was doing, you know, the meeting. And, and I'm saying that because I want people to see that it is actually accessible. It is not something that is remote. So if you do have a dream um, to be an actor, you're actually even better off than I was when I wanted to be an actor, I didn't have a dream to be an actor. I was a singer, I was a musician, I was a worship leader, and, and I was writing my quotes, and I was speaking occasionally in some places, but I was basically just making a living, going to work every morning, coming back at night like everybody else, and recording my albums over the weekend, sometimes um, after work. I All did right, three let, let, me, let, me, let me just come in so there, I, because I, from what you're saying right now, Femi okay. Jacobs, it, it, it sounds more like everything just happened and you were not really like it wasn't something you had planned it just kind of came on to you and if i'm being very honest i would say that 
it's worked amazing for you. And another advice that a lot of young aspiring actors would be to work hard, be honest about everything that you do, but it couldn't have been all that easy. There's a popular saying, honesty is the best policy. So just be honest, just be good. But would you really say it is the best policy, Absolutely. especially in a in an industry like this, the entertainment industry, does, do, does it really work for people who just want to be straight, honest, and good? Okay, before I answer that question, I want to correct an impression I may have given um, when I was talking about the ease with which it happened and all of that. I don't want you to, uh, our viewers to miss out on this. You bring the quality of who you are to the opportunities that you have. So, if you um, naturally are studious and, and disciplined and, and focused and committed in everything that you do, the task will teach you how to do it. I mean, I, I'm so glad that my first um, foray into the industry, I was practically midwifed by uh, Midredokwa and her approach to work and the way she takes her business, the way she handles the work was, was quite familiar to me even though I wasn't in the entertainment industry. But it was a familiar way because there was a process that she followed and she, was, she, she, she stuck to the book. She does things by the book. And I, I, that was familiar to me because I, mean, I had worked and I know the standards that you know, people demand at work. You have to be excellent. You have to be committed. You have to take every opportunity you were given and you have to run with it, with all the commitment that you have. But there's no fear. The, your hope is your character. If you believe that whatever it is you are involved in, you will do everything you need to do to be successful at it, then you're already good. You can get into any industry. And before people know that you're not even as talented, they would have admired you because, because excellence and commitment and dedication are universal language. Uh, you hear. Yeah. <laughs> in this TV station, you know, people who are committed always rise and is the way it works. So I want to correct that impression. Even though I didn't know anything about acting, the moment I got in there, I asked a million questions and I, I read a million hours of material. I, I prepared myself for the opportunity that I was given. Now, if you're in the entertainment industry, you bring the quality of your person to what you do. I don't think there's any industry that is defined in an abstract form. Nigeria is not an abstract place, for instance. Nigeria is a combination of all of the contributions of the people inside it. So the quality of the people in an industry will determine the, the quality of the experience of those who are in industry. So there's nothing like a dishonest industry. There's nothing like a, like a difficult industry. There's nothing like a closed industry. There's nothing like a corrupt industry. But there are corrupt people. How would you describe are, the? How would you now? Because based on what you just said, the quality of people greatly determines the quality of the experience of the people of other people within an industry. So now, how, the entertainment industry, especially Nollywood, is multi multifaceted. You know, so based on what we've seen come out of that industry, you just did a very fantastic film, Eagle Wings. I mean, I feel everyone needs to watch that film great content, great quality, you know, I'm hoping does wonders in box office because it deserves to. That is a film that needs to blow up. But now looking at that and how far it has come so far, how would you describe the quality of values that are being pumped into the Nollywood industry? Some people came into the industry, for instance, they were outsiders. Um, uh, Mr. Dalkwa was, was in the U.S., uh, was a lawyer in the U.S., and she came into the industry as an outsider. And um, people like uh, Kemi Adetiba, people like uh, 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 Balanli Austin Peters, a, a number of brilliant filmmakers like that came in as outsiders, but they brought the quality of who they were, right? And if you bring the quality of who you are into something, uh, because because excellence is universal, you will do everything you can to achieve the result you think is worthy of you. You know, well, I'm going to just cut you short briefly. I, I really want us to 
Okay. Uh, really get what you're trying to say. But before we land on this point, let's head out to a quick break. <laughs> and we'll be back with Femi Jacobs to keep up with the conversation on the Nollywood industry. Stay with us. You're welcome back to Rice 360. And before we went on that quick break, we were with... We were with Femi Jacobs, the Nollywood actor, and you were just speaking about the quality of people within the Nollywood industry and how that has helped in creating the industry that we know today. To bring all that you are into an industry, and there are some people who come around and say, oh, what, what's winning? What's working? What's, uh, what, what do the people want? What can we give the people, you know? Then that's a hustling spirit, right? It's a hustling spirit, and it's nice. It's it's capitalism, right? But and that's good. I congratulate those who are capitalists that you know the work they do. But I'm I'm a little bit more uh, I'm, I'm a little bit less of a capitalist. I I believe that your talent purifies you and fulfills you, and that's why I don't I don't believe the end justifies the means. I really don't think so. I think that the means is where you experience the healing and the, the, the composure, the, the fulfillment. If you're not enjoying the process and you're just waiting for the time when something will hit your account, you're just waiting for something, the response of the people, you're just wanting to, you know, then you're going to, your creativity will suffer. But there's, but it's, it's a mixture of that artistic spirituality you bring into it. it you, the work you bring out has to be a part of you. Has to be something that flows out of you and that agrees with the values you've signed up for for your life. So if you are an excellent person, you usually bring that dimension to work, and you will see that those who were, who had been in Hollywood and had been talking about. Uh, um, just shoot it like that, shoot them like that, shoot them like that, shoot them like that. It, it, they would tell you that that is, that is the industry. But no, that is them in the industry. It, that is not the industry, you know. <laughs> the, the industry is the collection and the average of where everybody is. But at the end of the day, our unique experiences are shaped and our works are shaped by our attitude and our beliefs and values and the things we bring, which is excellence is... I don't know how I can say this, but I don't feel so good if the process leading up to what we're creating is yeah. not excellent. And it's, and, and, it's essential. Yeah. So you just did a movie right now. Um, after I, I, well, Did you shoot this before, After Eagle's Wings? That is La Femme Angela, Mildred Oko's new film, which I thought was very, very Absolutely. interesting, actually. Was that before Eagle Wings or after? Um, it was before. We filmed La Femme Angela before Eagle Wings. As a matter of fact, my total relationship with Eagle Wings was uh, just about three months from the time I got the script, the time we were trained for it, prepared for it, and shot. But with La Femme Angela, it was a bit different. In fact, it was a lot different in the sense that I'm not saying in terms of good and bad, I'm talking about timing, because I got the script for um, La Femme Angela about a whole two and a half to three years before we even started filming because of my relationship, of course. Uh, Midoroko is a mentor to me. Um, she, she's, she's been generous with knowledge and I'm, I'm quite, quite hungry for knowledge. I'm like that. I want to know everything about everything that I'm doing. And she's been a resource person. So when she wanted to make this film, even from the perspective of me just being in her circle, she shared the script with me. This was three years before. And I read the script. I was like, whoa, this is amazing. And, you know, he was written by Tony Babalala. He's one of the better writers in, on this continent. And, and he was also the writer for The Meeting, which we had shot in 2010, 2011, which was released in 2012. So when, when she sent me the script, I said, wow, this is a winner. This is a lovely script and it's quite ambitious. And I began to, you know, sort of like I, the lead role, I was now you know, eventually taken by non so Bassi brilliantly interpreted. He killed it, you know. So this was three years before. The preparation for La Femme was much longer. Of course, I wasn't um, that close to the director of Eagle Wings, so I don't really particularly know when he started preparing for it, but from the quality of the work that came out, he also had been living with that idea and with that concept and with that script for a long time, and which which leads us to conclude, of course, we've been having conversation about excellence, that 
Sometimes it, it is the, the commitment to something when you, it's, it's amazing. I mean, these guys, they don't just, you don't just wake up one day and, and shoot La Femme and Jola. You don't just wake up and plan and shoot the eagle wings in one day or, or, or three yeah. months or even six well, months. These I, things uh, yeah. punish you when you carry it around everywhere you go for so long, yeah. Absolutely. And I honestly feel like at this point in time, everyone needs to go see that film. I've seen it. And it was, I mean, at first you're like, La Femme Angela, what's going on? But it's a lovely, lovely story. And Femi Jacobs, I don't think you do stories that are less, that are short of amazing, quite honestly. I'm really impressed with your work. And I just, you know, keep, keep doing it. Thank you so much for joining me today on Arise 360.